these communities. Um, and I know that we're not all, we're not all um, on campus and not necessarily all by uh, students on a regular basis like we usually are, but that's, we can impact them just like we're having a conversation right now over, the, over Zoom. That's a way that you guys can do that. So uh, before we get started, I want to go ahead and pray. And um, I am recording this in case anyone's missing it and wants to hear the call. Um, but I, want, I really want this to be an interactive time where we can share some ideas, discuss some different um, things that the Lord has been dealing with you about, and just really discussing the importance of how, to, how we're going to do campus ministry from a completely different perspective than we typically would. So let's go ahead and let's pray. And then um, I want to talk about a few things and I'll open up the floor for you guys to share. So let's pray real quick. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you are in control, God, and you know exactly what it is that we are dealing with. Father, you have allowed this to happen, and I believe that you're going to get great glory out of it and that you are going to save many people and align the church, align our campus ministries uh, in the place that you want us to be in. So Lord, I pray by the authority of your word and by the power that is in the name of Jesus, that you'd begin to awaken the backsliders, awaken the lost, that they would see that your end truly is near and that there's many things that you want to do in this last hour before the end comes. So Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, that you give us the grace, that you give us the wisdom to be able to hearken and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church so that we can be everything you've called us to be and that we can reach every person that we need to reach and find those that are hungry and reach them for your kingdom and for your gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. I thank you for every individual that's on this call, and I just pray that you guide us and give us great wisdom uh, as we proceed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I actually want to share with you guys a few things. I'm sorry, one second. My cat is, hey, love, do you mind grabbing the cat? Whenever I'm on a conference call, my cat wants to steal the show. He just really? likes to uh, make a bunch of sounds and trying to get into my chair that I'm speaking from. He's, he's uh, there he is. He doesn't like when I'm on the call. Um, so I actually want to share with you guys uh, two things, well, it's really more than two things, but I, I'm friends with a man that I would consider a prophet of God. He is a prophet. Yes, we, there are prophets still. Oh, there's Louie. You guys see Louie? You guys your- <laughs> there's the, he's saying hi. Praise the Lord. Hi, Louis. Louis. Hi. Louie, you got a word for us? No. <laughs> Louie's a little carnal. Um, <laughs> he's cute though. So the Lord uh, spoke to a few people, one being my bishop. Bishop Wright shared some stuff with us today during our staff meeting that I want to share with you all. And um, another friend of mine who operates in the office of a prophet, he, God gave him six, six to seven things that uh, were the reason for this whole virus happening. So you might want to get out a piece of paper and write these down because I believe that these are absolute words from God giving us clarity on why this is happening, what is, what is going on. Um, first, I'll read to you what Bishop Wright said. And then I'll read to you what my friend sent me, which what's amazing about this is that literally they are like so similar. Uh, some of them are verbatim. Um, so I believe that God is definitely speaking through both of them. Of course, Bishop Wright, he is uh, always dropping amazing things on us that helps us. And one thing I will do for you guys now that I think about it, I'll send you guys some resources. I really suggest that you guys uh, watch. Our Bishop Bishop Wright has done some tremendous, uh, amazing YouTube videos on um, prayer. And I think it'll really help us in this hour. So I'll send that to you guys in the group chat. But uh, reading what Bishop said, so Bishop said that there are three main things that God gave him telling him why this virus is happening and basically why he's what the Lord is trying to accomplish through this virus. The first thing that the Lord spoke to Bishop was that he's trying to cultivate people of prayer. He's trying to birth the spirit of prayer in the church. The spirit of prayer needs to be awakened in the church. 
because we are not praying like we really truly should be praying. And so God is through all these things happening. He's not only getting us to pray because people are scared, uh, people have loved ones, it's causing them to pray, but also we've got time to pray because of the th way things have uh, shifted in the, in the atmosphere regarding work and school and everything. The second thing that God spoke to Bishop about why this is going on or what he's trying to accomplish is God is trying to get his people to repent for iniquity. Uh, the Bible says that we need to humble ourselves. And Bishop was saying that God was telling him that his people need to humble themselves and pray. Because the Bible says when we do that in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, uh, he says that if you will seek my face, uh, turn from your wicked ways, humble yourself and pray, then I will heal the land. And that's one verse that I have seen constantly uh, posted or shared through preaching, teaching, so on and so forth. So that might be a verse you want to read. It actually talks about, I'll send pestilence, locusts to devour the land. And if you don't know this already, Africa has had the worst locust infestation in 70 years in, in uh, East Africa, or excuse me, West Africa. So it's pretty crazy um, that both of those things, the pestilence and the locust infestation is happening at the same time. God is clearly trying to speak to his people. Um, the third and final thing that God spoke to Bishop Wright. So for those who don't know what iniquity is, going back to the second thing, iniquity, biblical, biblical iniquity literally means doing your own will. Uh, if you look at the word iniquity, a lot of times you'll see how it, the definition is lawlessness, meaning, you know, no law, no restraint. But if you look deeper into that, the true meaning behind that Greek word actually literally means doing your own will. And if you look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Jesus is speaking uh, to the apostles and he tells them, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father, they'll say unto me, we've cast out devils. We've done all these many wonderful works. And he said, I will profess unto them, you, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. The number one uh, the number one thing that's going to get in the way of your relationship with God is your will. And that's where God, Jesus was speaking in the scriptures and making it very clear that we've got to lay our will down. We've got to submit our will to God because that is how we have a true relationship with him. So we have a relationship with God through yielding our will and, and our heart to him. And when we do that, um, Great things happen, and the Bible says that we will, we will make it because it doesn't matter how many miracles you do. It doesn't matter how powerful you are if you do not know him, and we need to lay our will down so we can know him. The third and final thing is preparation. Um, Bishop stated that God is trying to teach the church how to prepare for end-time revival. Uh, we are going into um, – we are. this is going to last – for a period of time, but then it's going to go back to pretty much normal. Obviously, the stock market, finances, it's not going to be an immediate bounce back. I'm sure it will bounce back probably at some point over time. Obviously, there will be some damage to people's businesses and all that, but I, I believe that most likely things will somewhat get back to normalcy. That's what Bishop was saying, but he made this comment that was very powerful that God spoke to him. He said, this is going to last for a period, but then it's going to shift again and go back to normal once this virus begins to lift. However, the people who go back to the way they used to be, meaning before the virus, their, their minimal walk with God, their you know, lack of uh, focus on what God's really trying to do in the churches and ministry. He said, people that go back to the way they used to be before will disqualify themselves from being true vessels of God that God is going to use in the end times because they did not learn what the Lord was trying to reveal through the situation. I know that sounds heavy, but it's really powerful if you think about it, because God is trying to birth deep relationships with us between him and us. And he's trying to birth a prayer life in us that we've never had before. He's trying to bring us to a place of submitting to our will, dying daily uh, to our will, our desires and our plans. And um, these are things that we really, really need to uh, seek God about in our life, these three things. Are we truly being people of prayer? Are we yielding to the spirit of prayer every day at any time? You've got the time to do it for sure.
Are we repenting for our will, repenting for the things that we are doing that we shouldn't be doing? Uh, even if it's a good thing, if it's not what God wants, it's not the best thing. We need to repent for those things. Are we preparing ourselves for end time revival? Are we preparing ourselves to be the vessel that God wants to make us to be uh, in these last days? I know it might seem like it's gotten a little heavy to expect this on, a, on this CMI call, but I feel like you need to know what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church through multiple men of God. I'm going to share with you now the last uh, six things that my friend sent me who operates as a prophet. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. He said literally verbatim some of the same stuff that Bishop Wright said. He texted this to me even before my meeting today, the staff meeting I was in, where I heard Bishop share. And this is what God spoke to the man of God, my friend, uh, these six things. He said, it will take, this virus is going to take the church out of the building, meaning we're not going to be just confined to the building. We're not going to just be hiding behind the four walls, but we'll actually go out into the streets and preach. We're going to go out into the streets and teach Bible studies. That's very relevant, uh, excuse me, relevant to campus ministry. We're going to go beyond the status quo of just sitting in a classroom, but we're going to go lay hands on the sick, all that. And I know you can't physically do that, but we need to get out of our normal um, tendencies and call people and text them and FaceTime them and reach for people. The second thing that was spoken to my friend is that he said, God spoke to me earlier last year that he would have a revival that will be attributed to no specific group. We will look up and ask who and how did this revival take place? This virus will be a catalyst for that. Many people are going to be used of God. It's not going to be just one shining star. Uh, that's not usually how God wants to do it. He wants to do it through many different vessels. So that is basically what the Lord also was speaking. Another thing um, that was spoken to this prophet of God is he said that number three, exactly what Bishop Wright said, this will birth prayer warriors now that they have time to pray due to layoffs. Amazing. The fourth thing he said, and this goes right along the lines of what Kaya said. When Kaya made this comment, it made me think about this word from God that my friend received. He said, number four, God has given the church her Sabbath. This is also a time of rest. Yes, this is a time where we need to reach for people. It's a time where we need to uh, pray for people. We need to let the spirit of prayer be birthed in us, but we also need to let the Holy Ghost pour back into us and recharge with our family, recharge in our own lives, recharge um, in our own spirits. We must take advantage of that opportunity. And I will go ahead and say this. I'm not trying to scare you guys. I'm just being a realist. And Bishop Wright said this himself. Uh, this whole thing might go on a little longer than you think. It's probably gonna go a little longer than a few weeks. Uh, it might go on for a month, maybe two. We have no idea, but there's no reason to worry. God is doing something through all this. That's the fourth thing. God has given the church his Sabbath. The fifth thing is that we, he, he said that God, or he said that the Lord spoke to him, expect deep spirituality to be born in many people. This is an opportunity to receive revelation like you've never received, to hear from God like you've never heard from him. Um, this is going to birth deep spiritual moves uh, in you if you allow it to. You need to be prepared and be praying and expecting God to, to, to prepare you spiritually to go deep and to birth many great things. Uh, the sixth and final thing, one of the final things he said is that this virus will go as quickly as it comes when these things come to pass. That was very powerful because that is exactly what Bishop Wright said. He said it's going to come quick like it's come, but it's also going to leave quick once it's done. But it's all for the purpose of God to work and birth these, thing, these things in us in the church so that we can be a part of the end time harvest. So I hope that this helps you guys, but these are very, very powerful words from God that I believe are prophetic, that are things that you need to grab hold of, that you need to speak every day, that you need to pay attention to, uh, that you really need to open your spirit and let God deal with you about these things. Because I'm telling you, there's no telling where you're going to go uh, when you allow God to deal with you about these things. And uh, I will share, Nikki just shared something with me that she felt like the Lord confirmed through what I am saying, uh, Nikki Papas, who's on this call, she's from Brother Reaver's church, very heavily involved with campus ministry. She said that uh, 
she's confirming because God told her two nights ago that how we respond right now to this virus determines our end salvation. I think that is very uh, true and very, because the problem is if we don't let God birth in us what he wants to birth in us, and we just go back to being content in our normalcy, uh, we might have a hard time dealing with things when the end really does come. And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just being real, just being honest, because this is not the end. This is just preparation for the type of things that will happen in the end. And so God is trying to get his people to wake up and get his people to be praying and to get a hold of him because we need to hear his voice and we need to walk with him. So Nikki, thank you for sharing that. Okay. Okay. Um, so I share all those things because I feel like I, I didn't realize I was going to get that deep into those things, but I feel like you guys need to hear that. And you guys need to hearken to it because it's the voice of the Lord speaking to the church that did not come from me. I heard it from other men of God and I believe it. I take it, receive it from God and will be in my own life. I am, my wife and I last night broke out into deep travail and intercession for about an hour last night, just sitting at the table, the spirit of the Lord came upon us. Um, we need to be open to God coming upon you and rushing upon you and trying to pray certain things through you because he'll do it and it'll be powerful. Um, with that being said, I would like to go ahead and, and jump into some different things that we've been trying to do as a um, different campus ministries. I want to go ahead and let Aaron, um, Aaron Lowe from Towson, him first to share what they've been doing so far. And this is an open forum. Please feel free to share anything God is giving you guys and talking about so that we can help each other. Go ahead, Aaron. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it was a couple of nights ago. I'll just tell like the backstory to all this. Like <clears throat> I remember back in February, it's February 2nd. So that was our, um, my first Sunday back at Antioch cause I go to a different church when I'm at home in PG. So, uh, <clears throat> when I was, um, it was first Sunday back at Antioch, February 2nd and brother Brown, he came up to me and he said, um, I have a word from the Lord for you. And uh, <clears throat> I was like, oh, okay, like what's he about to say? And he just said, um, if you want to see something along the lines, of, if you want to see campus ministry prosper, if you want to see soul saved or something along the lines of that, um, growth in your campus ministry, um, bring the Bible to the students. And so at the time, of course, like I wasn't, none of us knew about like all this time that we would get after um the spring break likely to be doing bible studies like outside of the meeting because we weren't going to have meetings um and so like at the time i was just like well okay yeah like of course i said thanks to him but like me in my head i was like well yeah of course <laughs> and so um now like a couple of days ago i was washing dishes and that came back to me um and god reminded me of that to say to make sure that we are still doing some type of a bible study some type of devotional um i like i seen will spriggs do a, a igtv video i want to try and do something like that too very likely um but just making sure that we are still spreading the word even during this time that we are not going to be able to have meetings or meet on campus with everyone that um, is a part of our group at our CMI. And so like remembering that and looking back at that just confirmed that, that like it's really important that we are definitely still doing some type of a Bible study, very likely like Skype or FaceTime or something like that. Or, um, <clears throat> and then IGTV sharing the word that way too. So. It's like a lot of things that God is starting to put on my heart, just ways to get the truth out there um, during this time that we're not going to be in class. And of course, continuing to pray daily throughout the day um, that God's will be done through us even during this time. And so like, yeah, that was just really good confirmation for us. And so <clears throat> I'm uh, <clears throat> going to be looking to, get in touch with like the other leaders of Towson Campus Ministry too, to be continuing the Bible studies that we all have um, set up 
there was a couple of hungry souls that Abby has Bible studies with too. And so um, definitely want to make sure that those continue over the break some way, somehow I will be continuing mine with a couple of people. And um, it's like more and more, there's actually one new guy that had just came up to me a couple of days before spring break um, and told me he wanted to meet up outside of the meeting times because the meeting time didn't work for him. And I was like, wow. So he's like really hungry for the word. So um, awesome. I'm still going to be trying to hit him up to have Bible studies with him somehow, maybe like a group FaceTime or something like that or a Skype. Uh, with me and a couple other guys, I feel like I already know who I want to try and hook up with for that Bible study. So I'm looking forward to all that. And that word from Brother Barnes, it clicked as to why he emphasized that then. At that time, it was like, of course, yeah, we're going to be meeting outside of the meeting times. But now it's like, yeah, we have to meet outside of the meeting times because we don't have meetings. So. And that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And <clears throat> right, I mean, going back to what what the man of God said, you know, God's going to get us out of the building and get us to step out in faith. And so that's huge. And I just would appreciate it, uh, man, if you can, obviously if the guys are cool with it, be awesome. If you could get a screenshot of you guys doing a, a Skype Bible study and send it to us on the chat, just encourage us of what God is doing through you and how it does work to do it virtually, even though you're not, you know, sitting across from each other. Uh, we need to take advantage of this Roman road. This has been paved uh, to serve this world. The internet was mainly, you know, the way they thought was that this is about finances and businesses, but God always takes what was meant uh, to connect people and he uses it for his glory. It's just like he did with the Roman road uh, in the old times when the, when the back in ancient times, when the Romans were building roads to get to each city. Uh, that used to be that was ended up being the roads that they used to preach the gospel and to get to every city. So we're going to use this, which the world has used to connect everyone, and we're going to use it to connect people to the gospel. So this is the day, the Roman road today is our uh, internet and FaceTime and Skype and Zoom and all that. So be taking advantage. Kaya, did you want to say something? Yeah. Um, this, what, it was this afternoon, yeah. So this girl, um, that I've never met on campus, but um, we're in a group me together for a dorm I used to live in. And she sent out this message, um, basically charging students to pray. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And she's, um, she was talking about how she's gonna fast Wednesday through Friday. So if anybody wants to join her, they could. And I was thinking how great that was because a lot of us are already fasting this week. And um, during this fast, we're gonna have, we're gonna use um, the call, like the call center for like uh, group calls to do midnight prayer calls. So for the rest of the week, we're going to be praying together at midnight. That's awesome. Um, against the virus and for healing and just for our campus. So I think that this is such a beautiful opportunity to, connect with more Christians on campus and also to get to know them so that I can also minister to them in any capacity the Lord um, allows. So I'm really grateful for that. And um, like, I forgot who, I forgot who said it in the group chat, but they sent out um, recommending like FaceTime group chats. Forgive me for not remembering your name, but um that's what we're going to be doing this week and following weeks. We're going to use Zoom and FaceTime for Bible studies and to encourage one another. And we have like group chats for our campus ministry so that we can just send like scriptures and encouragement to one another, you know, not just during our meeting time, but just at any given time that the Lord puts something on our hearts. So I'm really, um, I'm really grateful for this because I remember the first Zoom call we had, or that I was a part of at least, when I was asking about finding a meeting place. And I think that there wasn't a meeting place because the Lord had this in store for later on. So it wasn't really meant for me to have a specific location to meet because the whole point was to get the word out regardless of where you are. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome, Kaya. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, a few things I want to share from Shannon. She's not able to make the call because she had a uh, emergency church Zoom Zoom call tonight. She's. She, you guys might want to write down these ideas. They are awesome. So she said, "Oh, did you just get on." I yeah, I'm here now. Hello, can wow, you hear me? Great timing. <laughs> I know. Wow, look at that. You are in the spirit. Why don't you go ahead, Shannon, and share those four things that you shared with me? I think that they are amazing and very. Uh, would be just tremendous ideas that I think would help every CMI. Can you share those four things that you shared with me? Yeah, of course. Um, okay, so the first thing, um, which I'm sorry I missed what else you guys said, but I'm sure you talked about like virtual Bible studies. Um, and so there are a few ways you could do it. You could do one-on-one -on -one or you could do a group. Um, and I think it would be cool to do both because if you can use like Zoom or like Google Hangouts and do a group, um, you could kind of do that as you would normally do your weekly CMI meetings. Um, and that way you can still have like fellowship and everything, but you could also start doing one-on-one -on -one Bible studies, which are really good for those people who are super hungry. Um, so that's really um, something to think about is doing both of those things. Second thing is I was thinking about how we could still have like prayer in our, um, in our CMIs. Um, so one idea is, I'm sure most of you guys have a CMI group chat um, with, you know, people who come regularly, um, start asking them to send in prayer requests and you guys could once a week schedule like an hour, like, you know, I don't know, Friday night or Saturday morning, um, you can do a conference call and just spend an hour of prayer going over everyone's needs um, and everything that was brought up that week. Um, the third thing is to use the extra time to really develop more lessons in Bible studies. Um, obviously with school, it's like hard to always have a, a lesson planned and sometimes it can be hard to be prepared for Bible studies because there's so much going on, but this would be a really cool time for you. If God's laid something on your heart, um, you could develop it into a lesson, uh, like a CMI lesson. Um, you know, you could do PowerPoint or however you want to do it. Um, and just get some good material for you and your campus. And the fourth thing is to reach out to old contacts, maybe someone who you haven't seen since last year, maybe someone who they came once, you never saw them again. Um, if you have their phone number, um, you guys could reach out to them and say, hey, I know I haven't heard from you, but we're starting virtual Bible studies, you know, we're, we're doing something new and exciting and it's very possible that someone who was not interested a month ago or a year ago now would be interested in learning about God in having some fellowship. We're all going to be super lonely. So if they could, you know, they might want to talk to someone, they might want to do a FaceTime. So yeah, those are the four things. Um, virtual Bible studies, praying together, developing lessons and reaching out to people. Amazing. Thank you, Shannon. That is great feedback. Um, I just want to remind you guys that what the word was from Bishop and the other man of God, we've got to pray. And I love the idea of making it so that we can pray together, even though we're not physically together, but we're still getting the needs from other people. Um, that would show, that would show just a great, uh, great care for them. And they, you know, these students are scared. They're insecure. They don't know what's going on. They're, they're fearful. Um, we've got such an opportunity to impact them. So Shannon, thank you for that. That is uh, great ideas. And I love the idea of working on some resource, developing lessons, you know, get into the word study. Um, I will, I'm not going to talk about it now, but there is a resource that I'm hoping to come out with here soon. That'll be able to help kind of supplement you guys and give you guys some more things to, uh, to use. I'm not done yet, but I've still got some work to do. So I'm hoping that over this time of the virus, I'll be able to uh, knock things out. So I love the idea of old contacts too. Water those seeds that were once planted. You never know who's open right now. Anyone else? Yeah. Wants Go ahead, Shannon. Oh, sorry. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. Um, so there's actually a girl who we met at FCC over a year ago. And um, we just stayed in contact over social media and she, um, she came to church and she got the Holy Ghost um, and now she's in Puerto Rico. And 
because we stayed in contact, um, I'm actually, we started a Bible study and then she moved away, but we're actually picking back up on FaceTime now. And so this is someone who, again, like over a year ago, it's someone you could consider like, oh yeah, we tried, but she moved or this happened. And I was so surprised by how eager she was to actually do a FaceTime Bible study. So um, don't doubt what, what could happen from people that you, that you don't know anymore. Cause I was surprised, but that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. So awesome. Just so you guys know, I'm, I apologize, but it does look like we only have about four minutes left because it goes out at 40 minutes, but we've still oh, got no. time. So anyone else that has anything they want to share, any thoughts, feelings, ideas, anything God's been talking to you guys about? There's no, no pressure, no rush. Just I want to see if anyone else has anything. Um, I wanted to know if there is a, uh, a process in place for cyber baptism. Say, say it again. <laughs> cyber baptism. You know, we're doing cyber Bible studies, so I don't know if we can baptize people over the <laughs> face talk. Well, um, you're concerning me, Dylan. We might have to go over doctrine again together. Em employee number three, which is study. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I guess, I guess, I don't know. I mean, does it count if you say in the name of Jesus and they dunk themselves, but they have the phone on their head? I don't know. I don't know if it'll work. Self-baptism. Self yes, yeah, selfie baptisms. So, oh, man. Well, we can still meet with two people, so that's good. Meet with who? Yeah. Like, we're still allowed to have small groups, so we can still. Yes, just, I guess, wear your bubble <laughs> suit while you baptize yeah. them. <laughs> Yeah, um, I do believe, guys, I will say, and somebody mentioned this to me, that we're going to see a lot of fruit uh, from this where you might not see the actual results during this quarantine, but shortly after, if you obey God and do what you need to do, we're probably going to see some pretty awesome things come out, coming out of this quarantine where people will be changed. So um, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, Dylan, thank you for the laugh. I did see a funny meme that I thought would lighten everything. That's pretty funny. And I, I appreciate you guys. I, I appreciate you guys. It sounds like you guys aren't scared, like you're trusting God and that's good. You guys will be all right. Um, my wife sent it to me. It's pretty funny. It says our neighbor's house got TP'd last night and now it's listed on Zillow for 12.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see it. It's got oh paper, my gosh! Toilet paper all over the house now. It's worth <laughs> five million since since. Uh, it's hilarious! I literally just got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not That's easy to get. Such a flex. Get, so, what do you say, Dylan? So that that's such a flex to TV someone's house right now. <laughs> Yeah, that would be <laughs> it is wasting resources, but it's no longer a prank, it's now a blessing. Yes, exactly. Right. <laughs> so bless someone. I just posted it or it should come through, so you'll see. But um guys, I appreciate you all. And I guess what we could do if you guys are up for it, we've got the time. Why don't we do a few more of these calls a little more often? Would you guys be cool with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Good to me. Maybe we could do this like uh, once a week or every other week or something. I'll 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 think about it, and get back to you guys. But I think it's cool to try to be connected a little more often with everything. Yeah, going. for sure. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys very much, and uh, appreciate what you're doing. I'm praying for you all, and I believe in you guys. And let the Lord lead you. God will uh, God will give you discernment and wisdom on what to do here with everything going on. So just let Him lead you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wash your hands. Stay safe. Yes. Wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> wash your hands. Your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. If you don't want corona, wash your hands. Cover your mouth. Cover your mouth.